Okay, so let's jump right into creating the new virtual machine. At this point, let's go ahead and select the server that we want to create the virtual machine on. And we'll select new VM. At this point, we're presented with a list of templates that have been pre-configured by Citrix to meet the specific hardware needs for the designated operating system. As well as there's the option to create your own custom template to meet your need. But in this case, we're going to select Windows 7 32-bit as that's the operating system we're going to install. Uh, let's give it a name as well as a, a brief description to define what the VM's purpose is uh, for myself as well as other administrators. At this point we're being asked for the installation media. Uh, so we're going to look for our Windows 7 uh, image that is on our ISO data or ISO library that we've created. This point represents the option of selecting a home server. The home server is where the VM will attempt to start. Uh, in this case, it's a standalone server, so I don't have the option to choose uh, either a different server or not to put it designate a home server at all. Uh, so that way the VM would start uh, on any server with necessary resources. So let's go ahead and choose next. At this point we have the option to modify the virtual number of virtual CPUs as well as the memory. Uh, both options are, are good for the, uh, the demonstration that we're going through right now. So I won't change any of those. At this point we can modify the virtual hard disk of the VM. Uh, as well as the option to add additional virtual hard disk at this point if we saw fit. As we can see, the, v, the, the virtual hard disk, its name is Demo7, uh, and there's a, a zero that follows. The Demo7 is obviously the virtual machine name, and the zero is simply a designator for what the virtual hard disk is. Uh, subsequent virtual hard disk uh, that have been provisioned will be demo 7 1, demo 7 2, demo 7 3. Obviously you can change the name if you would like. Uh, you can also modify the description to provide a uh, distinct name for the, the virtual hard disk such as operating system disk, data disk, uh, SQL data disk, exchange disk, things of those nature to allow you to easily identify what the disk, is, per, disk purpose is. I can also change the size, uh, 24 gigs is fine for me. Uh, you could also change the location uh, in which the virtual hard disk is stored. Uh, if I had additional storage repositories, I could choose uh, whether I wanted it on shared storage or uh, a different disk if I had multiple uh, storage repositories locally. We'll go OK. Choose Next. Uh, at this point, we're presented with uh, which network we want to the VM to connect to. I uh, add additional network cards for if I had a specific purpose, whether I was uh, doing some testing with a firewall machine or uh, some sort of packet sniffing or something along those natures or a multi-home server. And I'll select properties. I can choose which network I want it to be attached to. I can modify the MAC address if I have a uh, a physical server uh, that I wanted to mimic. I could do that. Uh, also, the option to modify QoS. Um, I'll just go ahead and cancel. Choose next. This screen provides a review of all the options that have been selected during this, during the creation of the VM. Uh, Start the new VM automatically is checked. Uh, so when as soon as I click finish, the VM will start up. So I click finish. All right, so the VM has been provisioned. Uh, select the VM. Let's go to console to check on the status of the installation.
Um, now we're at what appears to be just simply a black screen. Uh, we'll go ahead and scroll down. At this point I can see Windows is starting. Uh, as opposed to constantly scrolling up and down, you can just come down and hit the, the scale uh, option so that'll will fit the, the virtual machine screen to whatever your resolution is within uh, Zen Center on the machine. At this point, presented with the Windows 7 installation setup process, um, and, and this will go just like a, a physical machine or a virtual machine on any other hypervisor uh, will handle it. So at this point, we have successfully created a virtual machine, uh, gone over some of the parameters in creating the virtual machine. Um, so that'll cover it for the creation of the virtual machine.